Good morning, everybody. It is day 17. The days are starting to rack up. They're starting to add up. Starting to feel like we're making some progress. And we're getting somewhere now. 17 days in. It's, uh, it's not too bad. That's it's, it's a big difference from day three to day four, all the way to day 17. It's amazing how quickly it goes. All right, well, I've only been up for about four minutes. I just jumped on the Stairmaster. Let me get this cardio in. I'll see you guys in the kitchen. This morning's cardio went by fast. That's the way I like it. I like it when it flies by. It didn't even feel like I was out there for 10 minutes let alone 20. So I, I like that. Pretty good. Yesterday was a different kind of day. Just the whole routine of it, but it was nice. It was enjoyable having a bit of a break from the normal daily grind, getting to go see my kids at school and hang out with them and spend the day with them. So that was really, um, I guess, refreshing. I don't really know how to phrase it, but didn't tan yesterday because I was still pink, and I thought this morning when I woke up I want to be pink no more, but lo and behold, I still have some pink next to me, and I can't tan, well, I can, but we go tan around 6.30, so if my skin is still pink by then, I won't be tanning again today, but if it's not... Then I'll probably go hit the tanning bed, but I'll probably tan for the same amount of time I tanned for last time because that six minutes really, really got me. And like I was saying earlier when I got on the Stairmaster, it is day 17 of the suffering and it, they're adding up and it's getting easier mentally because it's like, man, it's already been 17 days. Like I'm already over half a month. I'm over half a month in, like 17 days. Like, do you really want to break and go backwards? Like, having that 17, like, tomorrow's going to be 18. Do you want that 18, or do you want to start back over at a, at a 1? Like, it, it gets easier the more that the number, the days start piling up, and they start adding on, they start stacking up, and then you start thinking, like, how deep you're getting into this. It's like when you go on a road trip. And you don't think much about it when you leave the house, but when you get that first gas tank in and you're about 300 miles down the road, now it's starting to feel real. Like, okay, yeah, we're, we're making progress now. We're, we're 300 miles down the road, but for my vehicles, it's like 200 because my Jeeps don't get very good gas mileage. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you can see uh, a progress. Like, it's there's, there's ground being covered and there's a distance being traveled and it's just more motivating to stick to it. And then I know this is going to seem stupid. It sounds stupid to some people. And some people are going to scratch their heads and be like, what? Man, that's retarded. But even doing something simple as going tanning that makes you feel more of what it is you're trying to become really helps your mindset. Like with powerlifting. Like whenever I was a powerlifter, um, the more I felt like a powerlifter, the easier it was to overeat and to not be hungry but still be able to eat and go into the gym and do these brutal grueling workouts even simply by wearing a certain kind of shoes or a certain kind of shirt or having a certain kind of belt or a wrist strap or a wrist strap or or just whatever man it, it, it just and as far as it goes for bodybuilding for me it's like all the little things on top of what you do in the gym but what you do outside the gym, like the more you can do to make you feel like you're living that lifestyle, you're not just watching it no more. You're not just a, a spectator. You're no longer a, a bystander. You're now involved. You're now a part of it. The mentally, the, the more of the mental part of it becomes easier. And I know I'm not competing in bodybuilding right now. And I know I'm not even doing this for a show yet but the thing is everything i'm doing i'm doing as if i was going to be competing i'm waking up at the same time regardless i'm eating the same meals regardless i'm doing the same routine i'm doing the same cardio when the cardio gets more intense and it'll get longer as we go the workouts are becoming more intense the more that we go 
they're becoming more difficult by doing more reps and doing more weight. I don't think I'm going to add more sets in. I don't think it's necessary to add more sets in. I just got a 12 sets per body part, I think is enough. I just got to make sure that I'm, I'm bringing the intensity every single time I do my top set, like the intensity. The first three are just kind of warm-ups to make sure the joints and everything's working and everything's firing and nothing's impinged or clicking or hurting. And then that last set, I have to make sure I bring that heavy intensity. I don't mean heavy weight and intensity by, oh, I have a massive amount of weight on the bar. What I mean is like being focused and pushing my body to the absolute without... Okay, again, I know I'm kind of sounding counterproductive here, but like I'm not going to failure. I'm trying to keep my reps one to three shy of failure, but that's what I mean. Like I'm trying to shoot for eight to 12 reps, keeping the weight within one to three reps of failure. So as long as I can continuously bring that level of intensity every single workout, regardless of how tired I am, how much cardio I've done, how little calories I'm eating, uh, I'll be doing good. I mean, even like I set an alarm to go to bed. So whenever I'm watching TV, if I get caught up in a show or a conversation or anything, that alarm clock goes off. Oh, it's time to shut down. And it's time to go to bed. Like it's, it's bedtime. I like shut everything down. And let's go to sleep. Because getting up at 5.15 in the morning to do cardio isn't going to happen if you're not getting the right amount of rest. So like I said, every single little thing you could do to make you feel like whatever it is that you're trying to become or that you're trying to do to help you feel like you're living that life and not just a spectator no more can help dramatically with the mindset. Just like going tanning. It's so simple. Like, what do you do? I drive to this place and I lay in this little bed. Well, I do the stand up, but still, you get what I'm saying? I I stand I lay in this little bed with lights for six minutes and I tan my body because it helps my muscles look better. And it gives me more definition and it gives me more detail whenever Whenever I'm leaner, like whenever I get leaner, it's going to help my total overall body image. So like I said, the majority of this is mental. Being hungry and not eating is mental. You don't have to physically do anything to be hungry. You literally just have to be hungry. Like you don't have to get up and go running or jogging. You don't have to go lift a thousand pounds. You don't have to go and roll some boulders around. You don't have to go and redo someone's roof. Like there's literally nothing you have to do when you're hungry except for sit there and resist the urge to eat something that's it that's all you have to do resist the urge to eat something so being hungry you literally have to do nothing you just have to resist it so anything you can do to help the mental aspect of that because like i said it's really mental being sore and moving around oh, man, i'm drained i'm tired i'm mentally tired i'm physically tired it's all mental. Well, it's physical too. If you're sore and you're hurting, it's hard to move around, but it's the mind that controls the body. So, okay, well, I'm going to eat and stop the video here, and I'll see you guys at 9 o'clock. Well, back to the old familiar scenery of the break room for my 9 o'clock meal. Chicken and rice which is not getting old actually it's getting easy easier to eat 17 days of eating the exact same foods at the exact same times believe it or not it's getting easier not harder which is um kind of uh not what i expected it's not what i expected so there's some conflicting information out there about doing cardio whether it's productive or counterproductive. Otherwise, some people say that if you do cardio, there's a point of diminishing returns where if you do too much cardio, it actually causes you to move around less during the day. So if you're normally fairly active throughout the day because you don't do cardio, it's because you have more energy for not doing cardio. But if you do more cardio, it'll make you less active during the day which means you move around overall less, which you burn less calories. So something like a step counter would come in good, come in handy for people that want to make sure they stay accountable for how much they're moving around. 
just simply having a step counter and it'll allow you to make sure that you're still actively moving around as much as you normally move around whether you're doing cardio or not so you do go into a true deficit and the other option is to be like myself where you just are very routine with what you do at what times of day and what you do when and how and it makes it a lot more predictable if you're moving around or not plus i have a a more physically laboring job where I don't sit at a computer desk all day. I have to get up and move and twist and turn and lift stuff. So for me to be able to sit around and do nothing all day is virtually impossible. I have to move whether I feel like it or I want to, it does not matter. I have to get up and move because my job requires me to. So I have to stay accountable because if I want to get paid, I have to work. But for those of you who are in a different situation, Look into getting a step counter and maybe that'll help keep you honest with yourself on how much you're moving throughout the day if you're doing cardio to see if you're being consistent with your movement and you're not doing less somewhere else, which is actually just contradicting the amount of work that you put in the gym and the cardio. Just a little, little piece of advice for some of you out there. Oh, look what I got. My appetizer before my meal mm -mm, delicious i hope it's my fit oh it is my favorite fill capsules i think they're working i think the supplements are making a difference you can cherry pick whatever study you want So this study says arginine doesn't work, but this study says it doesn't. There's responders, there's non-responders to everything. I think some people are more sensitive than others to certain things. I don't think it's going to do like what the old magazine advertisements said, like, you know, the perpetual pump. But I do honestly feel like they are making a difference. And the multivitamin with the arginine, glutamine, beta-alanine, and creatine I think have made a difference in my fullness and my vascularity for sure. I know, oh, well, it's your diet and it's the lack of sodium and it's the water and the cardio and the water. It's everything. Everything that all adds up. Sleep, hydration, nutrition, supplementation, your workload during the day, your movement throughout the day, your cardio sessions, your workouts your intensity of your workouts the frequency of your workouts the frequency of your cardio what kind of cardio the intensity of it there's so many different things just like non uh, what, what's it called non-aerobic activities which is basically just like walking around working going grocery shopping doing dishes and laundry and mowing the yard everything adds up it all adds up every last little bit of it but 17 days 17 days strong of chicken and rice with some green beans three times a day egg whites twice a day oatmeal once a day and a protein shake the time comes for me to increase my protein i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go up on my chicken i've already decided that the chicken will not be how I increase my protein intake because as awesome as it is eating it as dry as it is that's not my thing uh, when I when I get ready to start increasing protein down the road whenever I finally lean out and get to where I want to be I'm going to bump my egg whites up from an egg from a cup and a half to two cups for breakfast and then the same thing for dinner and then instead of three scoops of protein I'll go to four scoops of protein and then if I have to I'll put a scoop of protein with my oatmeal with breakfast I'll do other things to increase my protein before adding to the chicken. And if I do add to chicken, I'm going to go, because it's eight ounces raw, but six ounces cooked. So I'll probably go to like 6.5 ounces is what I probably bump it up to per meal. So it's only half an ounce more, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you, you got to chew this stuff, it, oh, it's a lot. Oh, it's a whole lot. It's a lot more than what most people want to chew, including myself. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and eat. It's uh, getting to that point where the smell is really making me hungry. 
And I will see you guys at 4 o'clock in the gym. All right, back in the gym for another Wednesday. It is quad night. And the cool thing about quad night is it makes me tired. Now, I like training my legs. I really do. I really enjoy training my legs. But with the way my knee has been of lately, it's kind of like a hit or a miss because sometimes I could train and it's it's great. And other days I'll train and it just bugs me and bothers me the whole entire time and it'll bug me for a day or two afterwards. So I'm going to see how tonight goes. Hopefully it goes well. And uh, we have a great workout. But physically, I feel great. Mentally, I feel amazing. So I'm excited for this workout. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not drained, but tomorrow might be a different story after I train legs. Because normally day after legs kind of really crushes my spirits about everything. All right, let me get my warm-ups going, and we'll see how this workout plays out. I think I'm going to do what I did last night. I'm just going to focus on my workout tonight. I don't think I'm going to really be talking in the video much as far as it goes for the lifting. Uh, I'll let you guys know what I am doing. Excuse me. Is... I'm going to do four sets of squats with 8 to 12 reps. Last week I did 185 for six, so I'm going to try to get at least seven. And then I'm moving on to belt squats. Again, I'm going to be trying to do four sets, 8 to 12. And then I'm moving to hack squats. Man, excuse me, I'm super burpy right now for some reason. I'm moving to hack squats, four sets, and I'm going to do 8 to 12. And I'm moving to hip abductors, abductors to work the inner outer thighs. For, uh, two sets of each of those with about 15 to 20 reps. And then I'm moving to calves, which would be seated calf raise. You all see in the video because it's all going to be in the video. I'm just not going to really talk about what I'm doing, but while I'm working out. So the goal is to do three warm up sets, nice, smooth, and fluently, moving through the motion, filling the joints, warming up. And then the last movement, we're going to go really slow and controlled. We're going to pause on the bottom. We're going to stay in that position for a second or two, lose all momentum 100%, and then get out of that hole with as much force output we can do. And then we're trying to increase our intensity every single week by either doing an extra rep or doing one extra pound without letting the fatigue from the deficit of the diet take over. Because if you could continue to progress even a pound or a rep a week, you're making forward progress. If you start doing the same thing every week with the same weight or the same reps, or you start losing reps and weights off your sets, that's whenever you're going to start kind of losing your results or you're going to start standing still stagnant. At least that's my experience in it. So I'm just giving you guys a heads up what we're doing in the video to come. I'm just going to overlay some music so you guys enjoy the music and the workout, and then I'll talk to you guys more about it whenever I'm done working out and go over the, vid the workout and how I felt about what parts of the workout and if anything went wrong or how good it felt. So let me get this in and I'll see you guys when I'm done working out. Or I'll talk to you guys when I'm done working out.
I noticed yesterday when I rewatched my video that the, this part of the audio, even while I was editing the video, was super distorted, like I was screaming into the mic. And I guess I'm so used to talking loud inside of the vehicle because it's so loud in here because of the hum of the tires and it's not very well insulated because it's a Jeep, so it gets kind of loud. So I'm used to screaming, but the mic picks up the sound, the audio pretty good. So I'm gonna try to talk at a more normal tempo and hopefully that's not like a super crackly distorted sound on the mic. All right, I'm gonna recap the, the workout real quick. Like I said, I would on squats. I did six reps with 185 last week and I did seven reps tonight. Uh, the only thing is, I know you guys know, I tweaked my knee back in October and it's kind of been an ongoing thing. It swells up, I get a bad inflammation. I might possibly have arthritis in it, not sure. But when I was squatting, the knee joint felt fine, but it felt like something inside the knee, like, like rolled on itself. It was like a, really, like a wave almost inside the knee. It's a really weird feeling. I was gonna go for eight to nine because I got seven. I know I had another one in me for sure and I possibly had a ninth. But I stopped at seven because that weird sensation in my knee, it didn't hurt, it wasn't sharp and it wasn't like painful. It was just a really, really weird feeling. Like, man, that, that wasn't right. So I went ahead and racked it on seven. And then it felt like I got a lot of pressure in my knee, like my knee was swelling up, like, oh man, come on. I kept on working out, and then after about 10 minutes, uh, my second set actually into my belt squats, that feeling went away. There was no more pressure on my knee, and my knee actually feels amazing right now. It feels really, really good. So I don't know if it was my knee lining back up, if possibly it was partially dislocated or off track, and it kind of lined up, if it pushed fluid out, or I don't know what happened. And it could just be that my body's lubricated so I don't feel any repercussions. And maybe tomorrow I'm gonna to wake up and my knee's gonna be swollen hard. I have no idea. So all I know is I'm gonna just wait and see what happens tomorrow. I did my 20 minutes of cardio. My knee felt absolutely amazing. It actually felt better tonight than it has in a long time on cardio. I had zero issues. I felt absolutely amazing. So I'm hoping that that was my knee, like, a like almost like going to the chiropractor adjusting itself back properly whether it is or it isn't we'll find out tomorrow but when that happened it kind of made me think i shouldn't be going that deep on squats no more because my knees aren't capable of handling that deep of a movement on that much pressure on the knee joint anymore and there's no reason for me to go that low so i might start doing box squats to control the depth of my squat because man i like to sink it all the way down as low as i can go which when I have pressure and fluid in my knee, which I have of lately more often than not, it can cause a lot of damage to the knee and possibly tear or hurt something. So if I put a box in place, I won't be able to squat below the box. And a part of me says, just stop doing box squat, just stop doing squats altogether and start doing leg extensions. So I'm on the fence right now of either doing box squats next week or getting rid of the squat movement and going to a leg extension. Do leg extensions, belt squats, and then hack squats, and then possibly even lunges. And another part of me says, get rid of one of the racks, get a Smith machine rack, so you don't have to use your abs and your back to stabilize yourself, and you can really focus on the quads and still be able to do squats, but in a more controlled manner where you don't have to use your stabilizers and your balancing and, and all that other stuff. It's like, oh, there's carryover from doing squats, all your other movements, and it's one of the most fundamental movements you could do. Yeah, but it hurts. And it's not that I'm afraid of pain or suffering. It's just I don't feel it in my legs. And when I feel it in my legs, it's only my knee. And that's not a fun feeling. And if I hurt my knee, I can't do anything. And that's not good. So I'm on the fence. I, I have a whole week to debate on what I want to do with my knee, depending on how it goes tomorrow, if it swells up or if it feels better and how the week plays out. Uh, hack squat, I'm a, belt squats went great. I was able to do more wet reps, same amount more weight, same amount of reps, same thing for hack squats, more weight, same amount of reps. And then I just basically finished up with a, a hip adductors and did some cardio. So right now I'm about to drink my protein shake on the way to the tanning salon because I am not pink anymore today. Julia's pink, she can't tan today. Because she's a little pinky pink because her, her tanning session, she increased it yesterday by like two minutes. And now she's in the same boat I was in yesterday. I'm going to tan, I'm going to drink my shake, and I'm going to go home and take a shower and then eat my dinner and continue my night, which will be just pretty much relaxing and hanging out with the kiddos.
I'm going to go ahead and end the video right here as we're getting closer to the chaining salon. And I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.